Toronto, August 2000. In the more than half a century since George learned the terrible fates of his parents and sister, much had happened. At 17, George had left Nove Miesto. He moved from city to city in Europe, carrying his only treasured possession, the box of family photographs that Uncle Ludwig and Aunt Hedda had hidden for him. Then, in early 1951, he moved to Toronto and set up a plumbing business with another Holocaust survivor. It was very successful. George married, became the father of three sons, and, much later, a daughter. George was proud of the fact that, despite his suffering during the Holocaust, and the fact that his mother, father, and sister had been murdered by the Nazis, he had moved on with his life. He was a prosperous businessman, a proud father. He thought of himself as a healthy person who, for the most part, had put his wartime experiences behind him. But whatever he accomplished, whatever joy he felt, it was always tinged with the memory of his beautiful little sister and the horror of her fate. And now, here he was, with a letter from halfway around the world, telling him how his sister's suitcase was helping a new generation of Japanese children learn about the Holocaust. The letter from Fumiko also asked, very gently, for his help. Please forgive me if my letter hurts you, reminding you of your past difficult experiences. Children here do not have a chance to learn about the Holocaust, but we believe it is our responsibility too to let the next generation learn the lessons of the Holocaust so that such a tragedy would never be repeated again. Small Wings is a group of children aged from 8 to 18 who write newsletters and make videos to let their friends know about the Holocaust and share what they learn from it. Those children of Small Wings we are all so excited to know Hannah had a brother and that he survived. I was wondering if you would kindly be able to tell us about your and Hannah's story, the time you spent with Hannah before you were sent to the camp, things that you talked about with her, your and her dreams, and anything that would help children here feel close to you and Hannah, to understand what prejudice, intolerance, and hatred did to young Jewish children. If possible, I would be grateful if you could lend us any kind of memorial items, such as your family's photo and so on. It will greatly help us further promote our goal to give every child in Japan a chance to learn about the Holocaust. It was signed, Fumiko Ishioka. George could hardly believe it. Such amazing connections and strange coincidences had brought three worlds together. The world of children in Japan, George in Canada, and the lost world of a Jewish girl from Czechoslovakia who had died so long ago. George wiped the tears from his cheek and then smiled to himself. Hannah's young face was so clear to him. He could almost hear her laugh and feel her soft hand in his. George went to the large wooden dresser and pulled out a photograph album. He wanted to get in touch with Fumiko Ishioka as soon as possible. Tokyo, September 2000. Ever since she had sent the letter to Toronto, Fumiko had been a bundle of nerves. Would George Brady write back? Will he help us to know Hana? Even the letter carrier who delivered the mail to the center knew how anxious Fumiko was. Anything from Canada today? She would ask the minute she saw him walking up the path to the front door. He hated to see her disappointment when, day after day, the answer was no. Then, on the last day of the month, Fumiko was in the middle of welcoming 40 guests at the center. They were teachers and students who had come to learn about the Holocaust and to see the suitcase. Out of the corner of her eye, through a window, she saw the letter carrier walking very quickly toward the building with a huge smile on his face. 
Fumiko excused herself and ran to meet him. Here it is, he said, and he handed her a thick envelope from Toronto. Oh, thank you, Fumiko cried. Thank you for making my day. She took the letter to her office and opened it. As she unfolded the pages, photos spilled out. Four photographs of Hana, her blonde hair shining around her smiling face. Fumiko screamed. She couldn't help it. Some of the visiting teachers and students rushed to her office door. What's wrong? What's the matter? They asked. Nothing is wrong, she told them, stumbling over her words. I'm just so happy, so excited. Here, look, this is a picture of Hannah. This is the beautiful little girl whose story we have worked so hard to find. Along with the photographs, there was a long letter from George. In it, Fumiko learned about Hannah's happy early days in Nove Miesto, about her family, and how she loved to ski and skate. It was comforting to know that Hannah had had a good life before the war ruined everything. And Fumiko learned about George, too. As she read about his life in Canada, his children and his grandchildren, Fumiko was bursting with happiness. She began to cry. He survived, she repeated over and over to herself. He survived. More than that, he has a beautiful family. She couldn't wait to tell the children of small wings.